My name is Richard Clayton. I'm director of the Cloud Cybercrime Center at the University of Cambridge in England. Uh, but I'm also a senior technical advisor at Morg. And I'm going to talk to you about denial of, denial of service attacks. Uh, sometimes when they're distributed for many places, they're called DDoS attacks uh, from the initials. Now, Morg cares a lot about denial of service attacks because uh, members of Morg get hit by these denial of service attacks uh, and they disrupt the internet. Uh, they stop people uh, from running services uh, and so forth. So, first of all, I'm going to explain how denial of service attacks generally work. Uh, and then I'm going to explain how we might be able to stop them and how Morg is contributing to the efforts to stop these attacks. Now, a denial of service attack can take many, many different forms, uh, but a very common one, and one which is difficult uh, to mitigate, is called a reflective amplified attack. So I'll explain how that works. Uh, if you send out uh, a packet uh, to a domain name server saying, please will you tell me the IP address of isc.org, which is what your browser does all the time. If you want to visit isc.org, then it needs to know the IP address of the machine which is providing the web service. So you send out one small little packet that says, please tell me the answer, and you get a little packet back again that says that uh, isc.org is at 192.168.01 or whatever the IP address might be. However, uh, if you send out that request uh, and you forge the identity of the machine which is making that question, asking that question, so you send out a packet that says, what's the IP address of isc.org? But instead of putting in your own IP address, you put in the IP address of your enemy, uh, then the answer will go to your enemy. So you can send out packets and your enemy will suddenly receive lots and lots of packets saying that the I, what the what the DNS address, the IP address is of isc.org. Uh, and that may have an impact on whether or not, how, because there's lots of extra traffic flowing to them. So that's a reflective attack. Uh, and but you can make it worse than that because if you, instead of asking what's the IP address of isc.org, you ask the DNS system, tell me everything you know about isc.org, then you will get a much bigger packet back again. And so instead of just one little IP address, it will send you lots and lots of encryption keys, all sorts of other details about isc.org. So your original packet which was sent out, which is quite small, 40, 50 bytes or so, is coming back with a big answer, 8, 9, 10, 20,000 bytes. Right, so there's a huge difference here uh, between the amount of traffic which you need to send out and the amount of traffic which is being reflected back to your enemy. And we see these sort of attacks every day. Uh, tens of thousands of attacks are being made every day uh, on uh, people's enemies uh, by, by this sort of traffic. And clearly, uh, this, is, this is very difficult to deal with if you're, if you're the recipient of this attack because it's coming from lots of different places and you can't see who is actually sending the traffic. So what can we do about stopping these sort of attacks? Well, first of all, uh, we would like people to reconfigure their systems because in general, it isn't necessary for people to uh, supply a DNS service to everybody on the internet. They need to supply a DNS service to their customers uh, but not to just anybody. Uh, and that means that there are far fewer, ref if everybody reconfigured, then there'll be far fewer reflectors uh, for the bad people to use to bounce their traffic off. Uh, so uh, there are efforts going on to scan the internet for uh, reflectors, not just of DNS, but all sorts of other protocols as well. Uh, the, the time service NTP, uh, a very old service called Chargen, uh, which it's surprising anybody's still using because it, it was invented in the 1980s and it became redundant in the 1990s, uh, but there are still machines with charge end reflectors. Uh, so we're scanning the internet, we're trying to find all of these reflectors, we're trying to ask the people who, uh, who control those machines, perhaps you'd like to set to reconfigure your machines, you don't need to provide this service to everybody. So that's one thing we're doing. The second thing that is going on is we're trying to uh, mitigate some of this traffic uh, by blocking some of these large flows. Uh, 
that's problematic because we don't like blocking things on the internet because uh, well, once we put in a block it tends to stay there for years, uh, it stops other people using the internet for extremely uh, proper things if it happens to hit those blocks. So while blocking is appropriate in the very short term to, to deal with uh, a, an ongoing incident, it's not something we like doing uh, in, in the long term. But the main thing we want to do to try and reflect, fix all of these reflective attacks is to stop people sending out packets uh, with the wrong source address so that when the reply comes back, it goes to the wrong place. It goes to your enemy rather than back to you. Because if all you could do with, a ref, with a, an attack is uh, direct the traffic at yourself, then, uh, then it wouldn't be a very good attack on your enemy because you'd just be uh, DDoSing yourself. So we'd like to uh, arrange that every machine on the internet uh, could only send out packets with the correct IP address, with their own IP address. Now, that's very simple for some parts of the internet. Uh, for uh, consumer uh, machines uh, on your ADSL or on your cable modem, uh, then the equipment which is used as standard uh, has configuration options and almost certainly uh, your ISP ha has already set those options and there's not really a problem there. Uh, if you're one of the big networks, right, then it's a very complicated problem indeed because uh, traffic can be flowing in all sorts of directions uh, for, for all sorts of reasons. If there's a cable cut, uh, then suddenly traffic can be flowing the other way through your system than it was uh, a few minutes ago. So it's very difficult in the biggest networks to work out whether or not traffic has valid, a valid source address or not, uh, and therefore uh, trying to tackle this problem. And that leaves the other really big problem, which is the hosting companies. Uh, if you go and rent a server at a hosting company, uh, then the hosting company uh, may have some difficulty uh, in, well, they don't have any difficulty, they set up the machine, uh, they do this, but if you turn up and you say, well, actually, I've got my own block of IP addresses, then configuring uh, the, the hosting company to allow your own set of IP addresses that you came with because you own those IP addresses, you want your systems to be on those IP addresses, uh, configuring the hosting company's systems in order to deal with this random set of customers with this random set of IP addresses can be very difficult. Uh, and unfortunately, many of the hosting companies haven't bothered to actually check anything. So in practice, at those hosting companies, uh, you can turn up, you can send out packets with any uh, source address you want, uh, and that's what causes the problem with the reflective amplified uh, DNS attacks. So what we'd like the DDoS attacks. So what we'd like to see is the hosting companies uh, stepping up and doing more to um, check that the packets which are being sent out by their customers uh, have valid source addresses. Now there's actually an IETF, the engine. Internet Engineering Task Force. Uh, there's actually a standard, uh, it's called Best Practice uh, 38, BCP 38, uh, which uh, explains that this is necessary and why. That standard is in fact nearly 15 years old now, uh, but people haven't implemented it. Uh, but we're trying to make a bigger push now in order to see uh, that standard being implemented, explaining more clearly to hosting companies why sending out uh, these packets is a bad thing, drawing their attention to the fact that this isn't kind of a theoretical risk, that there's lots of attacks going on every day and they have to play their part uh, in dealing with them. So Morg is developing a best practice uh, for which explains all of this uh, in proper detail. So you don't have to listen to me, my ramblings, you can read it very carefully uh, in, the, in the document. Uh, it's got some practical advice as to how we're going to as to what you can do if you're depending on what role you play within the internet in order to deal with this problem uh, because it is a big problem it is something we have to solve uh, and uh, I look forward to Morg playing its part in doing so.